All right, hi, I'm TJ Maya. Uh, we're here to talk about the revenge porn update and deep fix. Uh, the reason for that is we've been doing the revenge porn update for several years now, and while there is more to tell, and we'll certainly cover it, um, we wanted to go ahead and cover a new related area that, that adds a little uh, bit of additional wrinkle to, uh, to the revenge porn discussion or to the abuse of people's images discussion. So we're gonna cover deep fakes as well. Um, my panelists here, we'll introduce ourselves in a second, but uh, just wanted to give you kind of an overview of where we are. Then we'll talk about what revenge porn is, what deep fakes are. Uh, you probably already know, but we'll cover it anyway, just to make sure we're all on the same page. And then we'll get into what's been happening with legal issues in those areas. My name is TJ Myhill. I'm an attorney here in Atlanta. I work in business and technology law, internet law. Uh, I've had clients who've had revenge porn issues we've had to deal with. So uh, I've been talking about this since the very first revenge porn panel, which was several years ago. I don't even remember how long we've been doing this. So, uh, it, but uh, uh, this is an area that, that I've got a fair bit of experience in. So all of my other panelists introduce themselves, Kara. Hi, um, I'm Cara Chapel. I'm a senior litigation paralegal, and I am a FOIA specialist for the city of Virginia Beach. So, and I'm happy to be here. Thanks, I'm Jackson. Can you hear me? Kind of. Okay. There Wonderful. You go. There we go. There we go. Uh, I'm Jairus Khan. I work for the Mozilla Foundation on issues of internet health. Um, I'm an activist and, and hacker, um, and uh, I'm coming at this from the perspective of uh, of making the internet a better place for people who are using it. So let's first talk about what we're talking about. Let, let's let's get to a definition of revenge porn and a definition of deep fakes, so that when we talk about these things and, and, and address how they are affecting internet citizens and the laws that are being used to apply to them, we know what we're talking about. Uh, revenge porn, obviously, is is someone taking revenge on you by sharing porn. It is, it is someone who has taken images of you, actual images of you that either you've taken or someone has taken of you, um, whether they were given to someone willingly or whether they were stolen from your phone or computer, uh, or accessed in, in some other legal or illegal means. Uh, eventually, you have a falling out with a person and they put your pictures up on the internet and you now have to deal with the repercussions of that. Or they send them to your family or your work or your boss and you have to deal with the repercussions of that. Deep fakes are images that aren't you, but sure look like you. So that's when you take manipulation software and put your face or your voice or both onto someone else's image. So you don't have a sex tape. Congratulations, you're one of the few people who made the wise choice to not take a sex tape and share it with everyone else. But I've decided you should have a sex tape and I'm very disappointed that you don't, so I'm gonna put your face on someone who looks kinda like you and now you have a sex tape. And I'm gonna put that on the internet or I'm gonna share that with other people and you have to deal with the repercussions of that because it sure does look like you. So, so that's the two different areas that we're gonna talk about. Revenge porn really does deal with your actual image. Deep fakes deals with not, but they both end up with things on the internet about you that you would really rather not be there. As a practical matter, we have some things we're gonna cover and I think we've got a lot to cover uh, on, on both topics. So we're gonna be just chugging our way through, but I have found that for this panel especially, um, with the updates, it does work best. If you have questions, let's just open it up. I don't, I don't think we need to wait till the last 10 minutes to ask questions or anything like that. If, if I say something or the panelists say something that you wanna ask a question about or you have a question or concern, just raise your hand and jump in. You gotta raise your hand because you gotta talk into the box because we're recording it. But if, uh, if, you, if you do wanna have a, a question, just go ahead and, and, and leap right in. So um, to start the updates, I'll, I'll go ahead and start just because the revenge porn update is sort of my area. And then we'll let uh, Kara talk about her, uh, some other things that uh, are, are going on in the revenge porn arena 
that, uh, that resolve these things. And we'll talk a little bit about where that's going to end up, I think. So the biggest, the biggest new news is that there have been several sizable verdicts, substantial verdicts, more than seven figures. So we've had, in the last year and a half, two years, jury verdicts against someone who's posted revenge porn of six and a half million dollars and almost nine million dollars. One to the six, the six point four million dollar verdict was to a, a, an individual woman. The eight point nine million dollar verdict was to a couple. Those are the largest verdicts not involving a celebrity. Celebrities obviously get a whole different scale because there's other claims that celebrities can make. But these are huge. These are enormous verdicts against people taking bad actions. Uh, unfortunately, these verdicts were obtained by a law firm willing to work pro bono, taking it under one of their, you know, legal clinics that the that the firm had set up to help people and gain publicity and things like that. It, it, it is something that was generated otherwise would have cost the plaintiff thousands, tens of thousands, perhaps hundreds of thousands of dollars. So that's something that's, that's effective if you can spend no money because someone's going to do it for free and get a several million dollar verdict, but not everyone's going to get the free treatment and not everyone's going to get a several million dollar verdict and those that do, you're never going to collect it against the guy who's sitting home putting images of you on his computer. He probably is not a millionaire. So these, these new verdicts exist and they're great results and they definitely show positive direction from when we first started talking about revenge porn. Revenge porn, if you guys were at any of our first couple of panels, was no remedy. There was, there was nothing we could tell you to do other than hope it didn't happen and take your own picture so you could claim your own copyright and use a copyright claim. Uh, there wasn't a lot of law out there. States have started passing laws, and some of these laws do have teeth, but they are still requiring a lot of effort to, to enforce, and, and it is still a costly process. So I think there's a lot further to go, but let's talk a little bit about some of the things that other people are doing around these verdicts that, that people are trying to challenge revenge for. Okay, well, I think one of the things that I picked up from that is while they may never collect off of these multi-million dollar verdicts, it's important to note that it's the, the court system looking at these people and going, okay, this is a stiff penalty and you may never collect it, but the next guy is going to look at this and go, maybe I shouldn't do this because this is going to take away every bit of my livelihood, you know, my house, my cars, anything that I might ever get out of life. I'm going to lose. So, I mean, they may never get that multi-million dollar verdict, but um, the next guy's going to think about it, hopefully, before he does that. So, mm -hmm. I mean, that's, I think, was their intent. Yeah, oh yeah. Like I said, it's still a great, it's a great result. It's just not a, it's not a definitive fix. Sure. So, they didn't win the lottery. But, um, so, one of the things that we did find, um, there appear to be people now that are actually standing up and acting as activists, where before, women who were um, taken advantage of and left hanging out alone. I uh, didn't know where to turn when this kind of thing happened to them. There are now uh, women's groups coming together. Uh, there was a woman by the name of Caitlin Bowden who was recently on a uh, show, was it? I'm sorry. Um, Megan Kelly? Yeah, Megan Kelly. Sorry about that. Uh, Megan Kelly's show within the last month or so, she's formed a group by the name of Badass. Um, and she has come together to support women who are being, you know, victims of this. Uh, she has got now about 600 members in her group across 10 countries. Um, they come together. She's got mental counsel, mental health counselors to help these women. Um, they have legal counsel for them, um, and she's she's getting a lot of support. So there's there's a lot of work coming together for them. Uh, in, uh, I'm, I'm from Canada, and in Canada uh, there was um, 
uh, a very, very famous uh, case last year, the year before, with a, a woman, uh, a, t a teenage girl actually, who um, she killed herself because um, a video of her was passed around uh, by a number of boys who um, assaulted her while she was passed out drunk at a party. Um, and the video got passed around um, and, and she killed herself. And so there is a federal law in Canada that got passed that makes revenge porn illegal. Any kind of sharing of intimate images of someone without their consent is an indictable inf offense in Canada. We don't have felonies, we have indictable offenses. Um, and uh, it's kind of going the other way in Canada in that now provinces are starting to pass uh, laws that would allow you to sue in addition to criminal charges if it happens. Um, but because there was uh, kind of a, a big movement to do something uh, after she died, there was a law passed at the federal level that now, uh, now does make it illegal. Um, but that law has not been tested against any simulated or faked or, or um, digitally modified images. And that's the one thing we really do lack in the U.S. still. Uh, since we started talking about this topic, many states have taken some action. And, and, and the reason I say some action is that they've not taken the same action. Some states have pursued purely criminal remedies. Some states have pursued criminal or civil remedies. Some states have, have made uh, greater strides than others at, at taking an effective recourse. Um, but this is still this is still a, a, an area where how well you are protected against someone using your images depends entirely on where you live or where they live. Um, and, and especially when we're talking about things that live on the internet, that is a national issue. And it is something where um, I've had a Dragon Con for 18 years, and I can't believe this is the first time I'm going to say on a panel that I think we need federal law. Bothers me to say that because I'm a libertarian. I don't think we ought to have any federal laws, but this one really does need some type of federal legis legislation. I think that's what we are lacking here still, because we are still creating a hodgepodge of remedies. Um, the the remedies that that you have are individual groups trying to to, to take action, um, legal legal entities trying to to litigate varieties of claims. These these multi-million dollar verdicts came through multiple claims. There were there were claims of, of theft, there were claims of computer hacking, there were claims of copyright violation, there were claims of, uh, you know, so it, it, all these things lumped together to make an effective solution, but you had to screw together all the various parts in order to get to the, to the remedy that, that worked. We need to wait for the box, but. So with the, um, the laws that they have currently and whatever hypothetical laws that would happen in the future, how do you get around the First Amendment issue if the photo was not taken through illegal means and was freely given and things like that? Well, that is always a challenge. But I mean, the, 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 the issue of the issue of revenge porn is that it is generally done through some malicious means. I mean, it, it, it is not it is not a typical situation that I take a photo you have sent me willingly, we break up, I put it on a web page, I share it on a web page, um, and you're doing it for your for your free speech expression. Generally, you're doing it with some malicious intent and that intent can get around free speech. So there is, there is harm that can be done, even under the First Amendment, from your intent to harm me. Um, there, is, there is also, obviously, far more situations. I, I say obviously because I read the cases. There, there, I will tell you that there are far more cases of people who, at least that I have seen, who have obtained the, the, the images improperly. So I, in terms of, of your boyfriend or girlfriend sends you something and now you're sharing it out there, it, it, it is much more common to steal something off someone's phone, find something on their internet, get something that was sent to someone else and copy it for yourself. Um, we had a case where a woman went and took her cell phone into a store to get it repaired and then started getting emails suggesting that she might want to pay extra and she didn't want her family to see whatever pictures were found on her phone. Uh, yeah, obviously that is not covered by the First Amendment. If you're on Reddit, you might remember the fappening. 
from a, a few years ago when there was the, the iCloud breach and people just went through celebrities' uh, iCloud accounts and, mm -hmm. and posted all of their images online. Yeah. So it, 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 the First Amendment is always a concern when you're dealing with laws like this, but it, there are the nature of this type of, of, of revealing is, is, tends to be uh, not a First Amendment issue. Um, so kind of piggybacking off of his question, legally speaking, is it implied that if you share an image with somebody, so like even beyond the theft of images or improper acquisition, if you willingly share an image with somebody, is that like implied consent for them to be able to share it however they choose, or is that also kind of up for grabs? I mean, I, don't, I wouldn't think that it would open you up to like, they are now allowed to First Amendment share your image well, that's again. It comes to the, the intent question. If I if I'm giving you, if I just give you a photo album full of stuff and I don't have any, you know, hey, here's some pictures. Um, there is a question of whether I have any expectation of privacy in that, or whether I have any expectation that you will not share that. Little different if I share a specific photo with you that I think everyone would agree I would expect you to keep private. So that's, that's where that intent question and intent to harm question does, does come in. Um, the other thing that arises out of that, the question of who takes the, the photo, and this is really what's been driving a lot of these revenge porn questions is a copyright question. Um, the, if I take a photo of myself, if I take a selfie, I own the copyright of that picture. If you take a picture of me, you own the copyright of that picture. And the copyright owner is the person who has the right to exploit it. Now, I still have rights as the person in the picture, but that's, that's where it can get more gritty in these state laws. It, it, is, it is easier to protect myself if I can send a DMCA takedown notice or if I can make a copyright claim. Uh, in fact, the woman in the $6.5 million case was having such a hard time prosecuting this guy sharing her images that she copyrighted her breasts. She went and had a, a file of, of copyright of, of photos of, of her breasts so that she could then sue for copyright violation. And it is, a, it's a really extreme outcome because you've got to then send your tits to the Library of Congress. But that's what it takes to make a copyright claim. So that's, that's part of the, of the remedy there. But on that note, have you guys heard of Facebook's solution to revenge porn? No? Facebook solution to revenge oh porn God, is fantastic. I yeah, you, I just remembered. I'm so sorry. A Facebook solution is you send us all your naked pictures, and we'll hold on to them. And then if someone posts naked pictures of you, we'll know it, and we'll flag them and take them down. And don't worry, we'll hold on to them. So I, I blocked that out of my memory. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a brilliant plan. But so this is these are the kinds of solutions we're dealing with. That's why there's still. You, you will hear even the anarcho-libertarian suggesting that perhaps this is one area where a nationwide law is a good idea. So I'm kind of going on by these questions. So, so far we've been talking about pictures that I've given to someone. I'm sure you're familiar with FetLife. Mm -hmm. And in a lot of those cases, people are, so for those who do not know FetLife.com, it's like a kind of social media for fetishes. It's uh, an adult Facebook. It's an adult <laughs> Facebook that's often anonymous, but if you go to a lot of people's profiles, they all have that copied part that say, if you use my photo without my permission, it's against the copyright. But in these kind of cases, of course, I took a photo and I posted it online. Right. However, I did say that. So what are really my, my rights? Well, simply posting it online doesn't remove your copyright. You, you, the, you, the copyright that you have in the photo gives you the permission to do what you want with it. So you can put it online and I can't take it. So as long as it's still your picture, that's fine. The problem with that is, and, and you're never gonna know this from looking at any one picture. I mean, I wouldn't know it, you wouldn't know it if we're looking at someone else's profile. But there's no way to say for sure who did, I mean, unless there's an arm clearly taking a you know bathroom mirror selfie, there's no way to say who actually did take the photo. And just saying that you can't use this because it's my copyright doesn't make it so. As long as it is your actual copyright, it doesn't matter that you publish it on, 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 a, on a social media page 
or a coffee table book or whatever else you want to put it out there on. You have the right to publish it. You selected that coffee table book. I can't then pull the page out of the coffee, ta coffee table book and put it up all over town. You still own the rights to the image, so you have the right to control how I use it too. But if you don't actually own the image, then you don't actually have that control and you don't actually have that right. And the photographer is the person who gets to make that choice. And the photographer may disagree. Can I make a suggestion to that? Paintings, when they go to museums, they photograph the edges because then there's a frame put over it and you don't get to see that. So when you go to post a picture, crop it a little bit smaller than the original, keep the original, and what you have online is the original is a smaller piece. So therefore, you have proof that you have the bigger picture. This is a smaller piece, this is your picture. Somebody else takes that and say, I'm the copyright holder. I have the bigger picture. Do you have? That's actually a really good idea. <laughs> <laughs> the other trick, whenever we're doing between friends, just do the model release button. Whether you're the model or the photographer, if you're the model, just have the photographer, whoever's snapping it on their cell phone, because now you have a contract, a piece of paper that says, I'm the model, you're the photographer, these are the rights you have and the rights I have. You can't post this anywhere other than here. The photographer still owns it, but cannot post it somewhere else mm -hmm. other than where it's specified. Now, one of the one of the challenges there, I'll get to you in just a second. One of the challenges there too, though, is that we are talking about now copyright claims, and the the, the problem with a copyright is this: you own the copyright in whatever you create from the moment you create it in the tangible medium. You snap that picture you now own that copyright in that picture. You can exploit the copyright, you can stop me from exploiting the copyright. But you can't sue me because the keys to the courthouse are the registration of that picture. And the registration is you register it with the copyright office. You pay your $35, you send in your form, and you send in your sample, which is the image that you're trying to protect. Mm -hmm. and, and that's how you protect your copyright. So the the problem for revenge porn remedies that rely on copyright remedies is that A, I have to go through the registration process before I can do anything other than send a really nasty letter about it, and B, I have to go through the registration process which involves sending my porn to the government. Instead of Facebook, I guess it's better, but it, it's, still a, it's still someone else having it out there and it becomes, it becomes its own issue there. So it's not the ideal remedy. It's, it's a remedy, it's one of the best remedies we have right now. It's certainly something I would recommend you have in your toolbox if you are being exploited right now. But that's why I think the ultimate answer to the, to the revenge porn question is not the remedies we have now, it's the remedies that we will hopefully create in the future. Mr. Redshirt. So if I'm uploading revenge porn, from a technical aspect, what is actu the actual evidence being held against me? Well, that is, it, that is itself a, a, a tricky thing in some situations, because knowing who's uploaded it um, can be difficult to prove. One of the reasons why the copyright claim is, is the, the go-to now is that we can send the DMCA takedown. It doesn't matter who put it up. The website will take it down if I tell them that it's mine. And in many cases, that's all I really care about. I don't really want to get some dollar remedy, and I don't necessarily want to have a criminal remedy unless I know who you are. If some random stranger puts my dick on the internet, all I want is that picture down. I don't necessarily care about any further remedy. So the DMCA takedown gives me that, that remedy. If the picture is gone. I don't have to know who you are. If I need to know who you are, there are discovery efforts that can be made, but obviously there's VPNs and, 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 and other types of anonymizers that makes it difficult to sometimes find who uploaded a specific image. But in many cases of, of revenge porn, the ones that go to criminal prosecution or that go to trial, you know who's putting the pictures up. I have to, I have to prove that it's you, uh, but maybe I can't prove it's you from 
where that image was linked to on Reddit, but I'm going to find the image on your computer. I'm going to get electronic discovery from you through the investigation, and we're going to find some evidence that you've got these images improperly, that you're using them improperly, that you're doing things, you know, to the, to the negative end. Five minutes? How is that possibly the case? <laughs> yeah, we haven't even gotten the deep fakes yet. I was panicking for a moment. <laughs> <laughs> Although that's a great segue, let's go ahead and talk about deep fakes before I get another one of those signs. Here you go, bro. <laughs> so, Jerry, you want to tell us a little more about deep fakes, what a deep fake is? Sure. I mean, it, it's, it's basically a Photoshop, but more fancy and complicated. Um, there are a lot of different techniques for, for making them. A lot of them look at, at kind of like machine learning AI techniques. But the, the, the Reader's Digest version is it is becoming much simpler and much easier and in that it's possible for someone to make a, a very convincing, plausible motion video of someone doing things and saying things they did not say or do. Um, and we're starting to see it now uh, a little bit as kind of like tech demos or, oh, can you believe this? Look at this cool video of Obama saying something Reagan said. Uh, but soon it will be fast and it will be cheap and it will be accessible to anyone who knows how to use whatever the next version of Photoshop is. Um, so it's something we're going to have to reckon with. Karen, if you want to expand on that or? We'll give her a moment. All right. Well, so the the the, the concern, uh, you know, obviously the reason that this ties in is that now I can make my own revenge point of view. So we we, we we tie it into the same panel, but it's a it's a much bigger concern than just that. Um, it, it, it has been mostly used in, in the porn sense, anyway, to make celebrity porn, and I can I can take whatever celebrity du jour I think is hot and now I can see that person naked and having sex or at least some reasonably uh, realistic simulation thereof uh, and, and that has already resulted in um, many sites banning the deep fakes use so reddit's already taken them down several other uh, other websites have already banned deep fakes because there there's certainly no first amendment right there there's no question at all that I can't do that. And that's really where these roads diverge. Okay, Revenge porn is a tricky area that has no real legal solution right now. And I think we need to continue working towards a viable nationwide remedy for that. Deep fakes, on the other hand, are already illegal <laughs> for a variety of reasons. Um, they're clearly defamatory. There's a question of defamation in a, in a revenge porn scenario because it's true. I can't, I can't defame you if it's true. And if that's truly you naked, I'm not really defaming you. But if that's not you naked, then I am defaming you. If you're not saying those things, then, then it is defamation. And so defamation is, is a very easy, straightforward claim to make against this kind of, of, of deep fake, whether it's from a celebrity or an individual. Uh, we can use rights of privacy. Uh, every state has a right of privacy act. Some of them are better than others. Uh, rights of privacy, rights of publicity. And y you can definitely say that someone is using your image without your permission to commercialize or, or, or create something that you didn't authorize. Many states have that in their, in their right of publicity. So it's something that there's, there's already a number of remedies for but it's, it's certainly a growing problem in far more than just the porn sense. So if you were going to try and define what a federal law for revenge porn would look like, how would you craft it? That's a good question. I've been doing this for five or six years, and I don't think I know an answer to that yet. Because the, 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 the ball keeps moving, right? The, the, the problem with revenge porn is that there's there's always a new wrinkle there's always a new there's always a new exploitation um, we can talk about simply using your image on the websites but then the first amendment question does come up a little more 
clearly if we're just saying you can't use someone's image on the web. We can talk about the, the, the technology aspect of it, the hacking or the, or the theft of the, of the images, but then that doesn't cover the, I sent it to my boyfriend, I expect it to be private, why is it on the internet? So it's a, it, it's, it's a multifaceted problem, and those tend to be very difficult laws to craft, which is why none of the state laws that we have right now are really very good at it. Also, I'm a litigator, which means I'm better at tearing laws apart than I am at writing them. You the, want a legislator, not a litigator. For the deep fakes, would the EU's right to be forgotten apply there since it's not actually you? Could you use that as a mechanism for getting it taken down, at least in the European Union? Well, I, I'm going to go with no. Yeah, only, I, I, only because it's not actually your personal yeah, data. It's right. not your data. It's someone made a thing up. So it doesn't actually contain, and I'm not a lawyer, but, uh, but I can't see that it would contain the data that is protected by the GDPR. Oh, right to be forgotten. Right, but, yeah. under the, but the right to be forgotten under the GDPR, I'm assuming, is... is well, there was one before the GDPR that took effect. Right, I think, that, I think that the GDPR kind of specifies the ways to implement that for personal data. Um, I don't think that because um, the kind of larger, uh, the, the prior laws didn't really have teeth the same way the GDPR do, I would be surprised if, if it was functionally implemented the same way across the EU. Yeah, it's not, I mean, it's not your, it's not your data, it's not your information, there's nothing about it that you accept. Your photos were used and manipulated to create the image that's now being shown. Um, but I'm not using those photos, I'm using the AI manipulation of those photos. So I don't think there's going to be anything that would go there. But again, the EU certainly still has rights of rights of publicity, much better rights of publicity, in fact, in many cases. And, um, the, you know, because they have moral rights. And we don't have moral rights here in the U.S. Because it <laughs> that means something specific in the law. It doesn't sound, it, it's not as bad as it sounds. Uh, but, but, but moral rights in the EU are, are, are rights that, that say that you can't use someone's image e even if it's their actual image like I can't I can't as a movie director film you in a role that you think is I, I give you a script and then change the script entirely and change it into a, a situation where you're now a, a child molester um, you'd, you'd have an you'd have an ability to object to that as the actor because I'm misusing your image and that's a right that doesn't exist here in the United States you don't have a right to your image once I've once I've filmed it because I'm the copyright owner but there are moral rights that affect my copyrights in the EU. Um, also the same, you know, again, defamation, uh, rights to privacy claims, the, all the things that we would use here certainly still exist under those laws as well. So for me, the disheartening part of this conversation is when, when TJ and I talked, I don't know, about two weeks ago, we're thinking, you know, we're gonna tell our kids, hey, just don't do that, it's a knuckleheaded thing, don't take those pictures. and. And really, the relevancy of that statement is, is lost now because with the whole deep fakes thing, it, it doesn't even matter if they don't take the picture now. So. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is something that, um, you know, cult there's been a huge culture shift. Obviously, this has created all kinds of new issues. Um, when I was a kid, if I wanted to make a picture of my girlfriend, it was either going to be a Polaroid. <laughs> Or I was going to take it on some 35 millimeter film, and the guy at, at, at the photo mat was also going to have a picture of my girlfriend, <laughs> and we all knew that. So, the fact that I can now take thousands, millions of images without any thought or analysis, film was also really expensive. If you were going to take a picture, you damn well better make sure that was a good picture. Now, I've got so many pictures on here of my shoes just because I hit the button when I'm not thinking about it. Okay, so, so there's certainly a different mindset of film, but it has led to this idea that now the way we say hello is with a dick pic. And that has led to this culture of, of photo sharing, of, 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 of naked selfies, naked videos, naked you know, non-selfie photos that, that are populating the internet with or without your permission. 
Um, and so it's hard to put the cat back in the bag. Once we've started taking these pictures, it's hard to say, that's a really dumb idea. Why are you taking that picture? It's a really dumb idea. Why are you taking that picture? But beyond telling you that you should think about it and really think about who you should share it with, I would definitely tell you to leave your face out of it and make sure you're the one taking it so you own the copyright, which is the same advice I gave you six years ago, and it's still relevant today. But it, it, it is something that we have to deal with, and now we have to deal with the fact that I'm going to stick your face on one anyway and make you say and do whatever I want you to say and do. Do you think that we're moving more oh, of we, a... Hang on, we need the box. Do you think that we're moving more of a, to a more uh, desensitized culture where our privacy being exploited is becoming more of a norm and therefore people taking pictures like that, people will care, or maybe our kids won't care as much? You know what I'm saying? Again, let's look at this. I, I, I carry this in my pocket and no matter what I talk about, my Facebook ads the next day are showing me all kinds of things related to what I mentioned to my buddy over drinks on Tuesday. I have given up the idea that I have any privacy anywhere in the world. Um, not everyone takes that viewpoint, but yeah, I've just decided I'm not going to do anything that I don't care about you guys seeing all over the internet because I assume that it will all be there. And I think that that is a, a direction that ultimately we might be forced to go in because everything that we've done, even when we were young and stupid, is now preserved forever. There are all kinds of pictures and videos of me that I'm glad are pre-internet, but you guys, some of you guys don't have that luxury. And certainly our kids aren't gonna have that luxury. So to some extent, yeah, I think there is a point where you're gonna get post shame, but we're not there yet, which is why we're still dealing with these laws. Yeah, actually, sorry. So doesn't this at some level get to the issue of consent? And not that we have this in our legal culture, yet but we've got plenty of people who have made tons of money by putting this kind of video out and are happy for it and would do it all over again right and so it really at some level becomes the the issue of the consent of who's in the video and whether they ever wanted that or not and in general you know our society we have all kinds of laws about if people go out and decide they want to do this running through dragon con they're going to be hauled out of here we don't want that in society in general right but then if somebody goes and releases the video everybody shares it then consent's really it never even comes up. I mean, other than I, I'm trying to sue you now over it. Right. Well, a, again, consent consent is relevant when it comes down to the question of did you consent to, to release the image? Did you consent to give the image away in the first place? Who's got the rights to the image? Intent of the person posting? All those questions are still relevant to the, to the conversation for sure. It, it's part and parcel of the analysis. Of, of the of both the revenge porn, whether it's something that you should ha be allowed to take down, and of the deep face, I mean, whether it's something that I mean, obviously I completely had no consent in you creating something that I didn't even take part in, but that's why that one's an easier solution and why I think we don't need laws. Okay, so I have a couple questions. Uh, the first one is, do you all encounter? You said you're a litigator. Do you encounter uh, sex workers who have their stuff up? for like pay to view and are stolen and are then put up on other sites that are for free and you have to deal with that, like stolen content. Um, and also is the issue about whether or not a person is doxxed for their image, like along with their name and information, um, is that much more likely to be prosecuted rather than a random image thrown upon the internet without any kind of name or information or like personal things about that person? Like what, what have you seen? What have you dealt with? A, stay for the next panel. <laughs> oh, no, totes. totes. The, the, the 10 o'clock yeah. one's definitely good. Uh, B, um, those are different questions. Um, they're, they're, I mean, they're related questions and they're good questions, but yeah. the, the reason I say they're different is they're, the, 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 let's take the image that first. So I, I, I go, you post, your, you post your images on a, um, you know, on a pay site. I take those images, I throw them up on Pornhub. The question there is not a question of revenge porn or, or, or what have you. It does go to the right of privacy, right of publicity. You can use those. But again, that really does become more of a straightforward copyright claim. Um, a picture, a picture that you have behind your paywall, I don't mean you personally, I'm not saying you, <laughs> a, a picture a person has behind their paywall. 
that I then take and distribute for free is the exact same as me selling you a copy of the Mona Lisa. I mean, that is, that is straightforward copyright violations. Um, again, it creates the issue of you have to have registration to do more than a DMCA takedown or send a nasty letter, but that is, that is, that is copyright violation 101. Um, so, so that type of behavior is much more directly pursuable in litigation. The question of uh, the, the, the reason the reason revenge porn does become tricky is the question that he asked about First Amendment of do I have permission to, to put this up because you sent me the image. Now I'm the one with the image. It's not behind a paywall. I didn't steal it. So the theft makes it it, it makes it much more cleanly clearly a copyright case. As far as the doxing certainly is going to make it much more prosecutable. Will it be prosecuted? Depends on where you are. Will it be acted upon? Depends on how seriously the police take it. Unfortunately, you know, the, 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 the reality of the world is there's still murderers and rapists and criminals and we don't have enough police to pursue everything. And so individual identity theft, um, uh, you know, financial harm, those types of things are often left to guys like me to remedy civilly rather than a prosecution. But again, that is a far more clearly directly criminal act or prosecutable act or litigatable act because it is it is a crime we all are well aware of and you didn't have any even smell of authority about it and what about things like snapchat like folks use snapchat to sell images but it's not necessarily specifically porn or like a clip site so where does that fall? Well, sna again, Snapchat comes down to the same type of issue. Are you selling me the image? Then you've sold me the image. I bought it. I don't have any rights to it. It's very clearly, you know, it, it's very clearly defined that I don't have any right to, to do anything with that image. Did I take it? Then I own the copyright. Then I have the problem. Did you send it to me because we were dating and I didn't pay for it? Then it becomes more revenge porn than copyright clearly and it does fall under some different rubrics. So it does kind of depend, at least in my opinion, on, on what the transaction that gained that photo is. A business transaction has certain parameters that are easily defined as breach of contract, copyright violation, et cetera. <coughs> there has it. Where's the box? We got a box up here, we got a box right, so, yeah. Are there additional legal ramifications when the selfie we're talking about is of a minor? Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> uh, so the, when you start dealing with, with, with those questions, um, you're implicating all the same things that we've been talking about with adults, but you also have child porn laws, which we do have federal laws about. And unfortunately, you know, state and federal laws there are blind to modern reality. And what I mean by that is not that I'm pro child porn at all, please stop that. But the, the question of child pornography has been applied to teenagers sharing pictures with their boyfriends and girlfriends. Um, and, and that has created scenarios where two consenting people, I mean, I can't, can't call them adults, but two consenting people have shared pictures with each other. No one has shared it with anyone else, although, let's be honest, every teenage boy is going to show all his buddies that, that picture sooner or later. Uh, but even if no one shared it with anyone else, they are now both guilty in many places of possession of child pornography and can be prosecuted for possession and transmission of child pornography because I sent you my picture and you sent me your picture. We have both not only possessed but transmitted child pornography. And so certainly looking at the revenge porn and the deep fakes question, there's, there's additional legal implications that come of that. But this is one of those areas where the, the laws that are there to do good are sometimes creating more harm. Yes, I, and this is yeah. kind of a practical question. Um, if you have a victim, and, and this is somebody who voluntarily gave a picture of herself 
or made a video with her boyfriend, they become estranged and he's mad mm -hmm. and he turns around and it's like either you, you know, the usual range of threats, blackmail, that kind of thing. And he posts, whether it's, he just prints it out and puts it in a bathroom someplace with her name on it. What are her practical remedies? I'm very concerned when you started talking about First Amendment rights. Well, you, you, you've, you've, you've nailed down a couple of critical issues. Um, one, one is that there is extortion involved. So if you're, asking, if you're asking about somebody who has made threats or made demands before the image went up, again, that's a much cleaner question. Um, because then I don't have to worry about the revenge porn aspect. I can go straight to good old fashioned blackmail and, and, and get a remedy there. And that's certainly what I would recommend. Um, the, the, the nature of that blackmail and the nature of the disclosure still gives rise to all those other claims we discussed, but it, it, it is the, the easier you can make this for someone to understand the claim the better your claim is. So if you have someone who says, so I'm going to share your image if you don't give me X, that's a much better claim than the person who just says, wow, I'm really pissed and drunk, I'm gonna throw your picture up online. Um, not that we can't do anything about that, but that is, the, that is a harder one and it's gotta be explained and it's gotta be worked through these hodgepodge of laws, whereas blackmail is blackmail is blackmail. Can anyone want to hear me? All right. So, uh, just a couple questions, and I really want to get this off my chest. Why? Why is it? Do we feel the ne the need to just share revenge porn? Like, not only are you making hell for yourself, but you're making someone else's life hell as well. So, I just want to say, please, just stop it. Just, just stop. And now, uh, on to my main question, do you see a foreseeable change in the years to come in stopping revenge porn completely? Well, I don't know that we ever stop anything completely. Obviously, we, we still haven't stopped anything else. There's laws against either. But the do I see a change? Yes, I do. I mean, just since the time we've been doing this, we've gone from no laws to one or two states trying to make some brand new uh, legislation to most states having some form of legislation um, to cases now being very successful, um, which, you know, wasn't the case before. Even when we had, you know, California passed the first law and it, it didn't, the, the cases that were brought under it didn't really go that well. And so uh, now we're starting to see state legislation really taking effect and we're starting to see cases that are being effective as Kara said to me you, when you say somebody's got a, 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 a six or seven or eight or nine million dollar judgment against them then maybe I do think twice about whether I take some extra action next time maybe I'm not really as mad at you as I think I am I'm probably not nine million dollars mad at you so it's it's a it, it is a positive progression and I do see positive progression happening. That said, this is an area where I do think we need to take action on both fronts. Uh, on, on, on the deep fakes front, the, 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 the thing we haven't talked about now is that there's, there's been sort of an immediate rush to, to legislate that too. Um, because not only of the porn aspect of it, but because of the, of the news aspect of it, of the publicity, of the political aspect of it. Okay, I can, I, I can make your face on a porn star and make a very realistic porn video of you and that's certainly the topic we're covering tonight but I can also you know put a put a politician's face on somebody else's body and make them say or do whatever I want them to say or do too and now we really are entering the area of actual fake news and that that's its own problem again I think it's a problem that already has a remedy but but many legislators are, are leaping to the wheel to try and, and, and create some resolution for this. That's one of those areas where we already have a solution and trying to figure out a way to legislate it better is likely going to find laws that are too restrictive, 
cause problems with other rights. It's going to be exactly what we have with SESTA and FOSTA. Spoilers, 10 o'clock. Um, and and that's, that's when you've got legislation that is supposed to do something great and ends up just screwing everybody. And that's where I think we're going to go with, with, with deep fakes if we don't convince people that we're already good there. But revenge porn, we're not really good on. And so this is where your activism comes in. And to make sure we get better than where we are. Right. And I, I, go ahead. I think that, like I said, the organizations that are now kind of pop-up organizations that are springing up and bringing awareness to this mm -hmm. um, and showing support for the people that are actually the victims of this knuckleheaded behavior is, is moving forward. And I think the more we see of that, um, the less we'll see of things like revenge porn. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. And, and so, definitely do take take action. Call your call your representatives. Call your state, your local, your federal uh, representatives, and 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 take some action to make the law that that you want to make. Uh, so, is it possible to use copyright to? prevent the spread of deep fakes specifically by the use of say the derivative uh, like uh, the derivative use provision of copyright so uh, since you're going to be using say somebody else's pictures to train the models that do the AI that make the deep fake look real could you not say that's a transformative use or derivative work yeah, and I think the person who owns whatever the, the underlying core video is has a great claim there. So the, the, the person who has the video that you've put my image on, that is obviously a derivative work of my video, and it's probably also already a copyrighted work. It's probably also already registered. So you have a great claim there from that person. I think you would still have a claim as the person whose images were used because you have copyright in those images if you have copyright in those images. So if I use your selfie and not photos that I, you know, that someone else took of you um, that you put on Facebook or that were glamour shots or that I stalked you down the street, took pictures of you. Um, if you, if, if the images that were used were images you owned the copyright to, then you would be able to make a derivative use claim there too. But Again, that's one of those areas where copyright law doesn't really favor the model. Um, so in, in this country, we don't have the moral rights, we don't have any claims there, and you, you only have copyright in images you take, not pictures that are taken of you. Uh, so as long as you can show that you own those copyrights, then yes, you, you the person whose image is used and manipulated, can also bring a derivative right claim. But really that'd be much more clean on the person who owns the underlying video. I'm going to try to think for a second on how to word this very well. Sitting here and listening to the questions and who is asking the questions, do you find that those who identify as female have a difficult time um, standing up for themselves because there is such a loud voice of, well, it's my right. Does that make sense? Because as I listen, it's, I hear a lot of male voices talking about First Amendment. Well, it's, it's tough to say what you'd get. The people who come to me mm -hmm. are certainly raising their rights. Um, and, and there are, m many of them are women. Uh, the, the, the majority of the, of the revenge porn claims that I guess does it women. seem like they come to you feeling powerless because, because of that, because they feel... Well, anyone yeah. in that position is going to feel powerless. The people, the people who okay. are going to come to me because their images are being shared without their permission mm -hmm. are definitely going to be, okay. you know, feeling exploited at the very least. Yeah. Um, but I can't answer that question because I can't tell you how many people don't come to me. So there are, without doubt, people who are home, seeing these images, absolutely mortified, and so mortified and so disempowered that they don't feel like they can come and, and talk to me about it or try to pursue some claim. 
Um, I, I would hope that as this becomes more of a, of a societal remedy, as we get groups like Badass, as we get groups um, pushing for you know, a, a fix, that it does become something that people will come. But I, I, I have no idea how to give you any statistics of the people who don't come to me. And those are the only ones I see. Yeah, so no, that's fine. I wasn't sure if yeah. there was any knowledge out there about it. Yeah. Uh, statement number one, as a guy, why does it seem that the majority of the male questions were trying to dodge the issue, I believe was the unanswered or the, the vague question that was put out there. On a, my personal question is, is it, does it seem to be in America harder for males hurt by revenge porn to get their case even not ridiculed and gone through the process? Uh, you know, that, that's a, um, again, something that I don't have a, a lot of metric for. Um, certainly the majority of cases that I have seen of non-celebrity of, of non-celebrity revenge porn have typically been either against women or against couples. Uh, I, I, I have not seen a case that dealt with just a single man. Now, that doesn't mean they're not out there. I, I certainly by no means know every single case ever filed. But um, I have not seen a case that was that was brought by a single man for, for images. It certainly doesn't mean they don't exist, whether that's because they didn't get traction or whether it's because they didn't get the publicity to the point that I see them when I prepare for these panels I, or, or, or my other cases, I don't know. I think probably what you'll find is, is like when the subject of domestic violence first came about is that it primarily revolved around women and as it became uh, better known, we saw the numbers kind of even out after time once uh, men felt more comfortable coming forward and speaking openly and honestly about it uh, you saw the numbers kind of rise on both sides mm -hmm. so I think right now in terms of what was actually being seen it's probably more women coming forward and as the subject becomes more well known and people become more comfortable with it and want to step forward you may see it even out and right I'm, and, and to right. add on to add on that I think that I think that when it comes to revenge porn the women who are uh, subject to it compared to men who are subject to it are disproportionately going to be more vulnerable to whatever happens right like women are going to be the people targeted by uh, by it more often than men because it has a greater impact on women than men, right? It's a lot easier to get uh, a teacher fired for, you know, women get fired for, you know, doing pole dancing classes, right? The If you look at, you know, Gamergate, if you look at, at the way women who are movie stars or, or, or comic book artists or whatever get treated for being women on the internet, those are the people who are going to have those images shared, who are going to have the fake stuff made about them. Uh, and I think because of sexism, those are the people that, you know, if, if I start a new job and my boss gets a, a, a fake porn of me and it's like, oh, Jairus did, did a, a whatever, uh, I think m the odds of that impacting my career would be a lot more if I was a woman. So I think that, I think that the issue is going to disproportionately affect women in a way that is different from um, a lot of similar issues, uh, both because of the people who are doing it and the impact that it's going to have on them. Well, obviously, there's a lot more to discuss, but we are completely out of time. So uh, come back next year. <laughs>